to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. The Bible and even science agrees that there is not only one plane of living. The Bible lets us know that there are dimensions and planes of reality. For instance, there is the physical realm where we can touch, we can interact with things, matter as we know. But the Bible and even science tells us that there are other realms and other dimensions and planes of living that may be beyond our scientific scope. Now, most believers either have not intentionally studied and believed the reality of these planes and these realms. Um, sadly, not, not, to, not to glorify Satan, but people who have passed through all kinds of occultic practices would tell you that whilst they were involved in some of these things, they were exposed to realms and dimensions and planes of reality that were above and beyond this natural plane. So the first thing we have to learn this morning is that the physical realm is not the only realm available. The physical realm is not the only realm available. The very design of man, the very design of man attests to the fact that the physical realm is not the only realm available. The Bible says, that when God made man, he first made spirit, man came out of God. Is that true? And then the Bible says, God molded Adam, dark earth, and he breathed into that dark earth, and man became a living soul. So man was built with an advantage to be able to interact with both realms, that man is able to concurrently interact with the realm of the spirit, and to interact with the physical realm. If you're together, please say amen. amen. In Colossians chapter 1 and verse 16, Colossians 1 and verse 16, Colossians chapter 1 and verse 16, it says, For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible. So there are invisible things that were created. The fact that it is invisible does not mean it is unreal. It just means that it is beyond the realm and the grasp of the optical eyes. It says visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. That means there are many things that have been created that from a scientific standpoint we have not interacted with yet. Are we together now? This is very important. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 18, 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 18, Paul is still speaking. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 18. Please let's read together. Ready? One to read. While we look not at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen. Hold on. The second information the Bible tells us is that there is a possibility to look at the things that are unseen. It says, while we look not at the things which are seen, but the things which are unseen. Under a certain condition, you can look at the things that are unseen. Are we together? And then he tells us that anything you can see without any effort is temporal. But the things which are not seen are eternal. 
it is possible to look at things unseen. In 2 Kings chapter 6, very popular scripture, we'll just read three of the portion, 2 Kings 6 from verse 16. This was Elisha and his servant when they were surrounded by the armies and he was afraid. And the Bible says, and he, the evening Elisha, answered and said, fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. 17. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes. Question, was he blind? So what kind of opening was he talking about? That means there is another opening that is beyond this opening you have. Are we together now? He was talking to someone who had physical sight. But he said you only have sight within the scope of one realm. When it has to do with the higher dimension, you may not be able to see. So open his eyes. And the Lord opened his eyes. So God himself was attesting to the fact that this man, based on a certain plane of reality, he was blind. Open the eyes of the young man, and the Bible says, and he saw. What did he now see that he did not see before? Because the Bible does not record the man being physically blind. And yet the Bible says his eyes were opened again, and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses. You mean he had never seen physical horses? What kind of horses were these ones that you cannot see with the first kind of vision? Horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. Please pay attention. Now he's seen another reality. Until that time, if you ask the man, document everything you can see. He would have written trees, horses, and if you told him there is more, he would say, I cannot. The same way you look at your bank account, the same way you look at the report around you, and based on your optical eyes, you can write and document certain things, and when you bring it before the Lord, he says, that is not true. There is another opening that needs to happen to you. The fear of this man was based on the limitation of his sight. The fear was not based on the strength of the enemy. The strength was based on the limitation of his sight. When that other dimension of opening happened, the subject of fear died immediately. Could it be, could it be that... The reason why you may have been afraid and uncomfortable about tomorrow and your next level is because you have not received this miracle of the opening of your eyes. Are we together? So there is a realm of reality beyond the physical realm. This is true. That all that we see is not all that there is. All that we see is not all that we need. There are many tools that we need to establish our victories in Christ that are beyond the scientific realm. Now this is why the Bible says the natural man does not understand the things of the spirit. Why? Because they are spiritually discerned. He will need to tap into a frequency higher than the scientific realm. Write this down, please. The supernatural is an interplay between the Word of God and the Spirit of God. The supernatural is an interplay between the Word of God and the Spirit of God. The supernatural is an interplay between the Word of God and the Spirit of God. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1, it says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And then the Bible says, verse 2, it says, Now the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. 
and the Spirit of God. So we see the Spirit of God moving upon the face of the waters. And then verse 3, we now see the Word of God. Let there be light. And the Bible says there was light. I hope you know that this light was not sunlight. No, this was not sunlight. This was the life-giving component of creation. This light that becomes the life of men. You see, sunlight was created, I think day four or so. So this was, he was not talking of sunlight. The supernatural is an interplay between the word of God and the spirit of God. Why do we need to understand the supernatural? Please look up. If you do not understand the supernatural, you will not be able to transport to your realms the tools that are needed for you to walk in victory. In fact, the Bible says the weapons of our warfare. He already gives you an information. Don't look for them in this realm. You will not find them here. He's taught them in a realm where thieves cannot access. He's taught them in a realm where the manipulations of a government cannot access. He's taught them in a realm where political manipulations cannot access. He's taught them in the realm of the spirit. And he says, whenever you need them, do not search for them physically. They are not carnal. He says they are mighty through God. You will need to pull them from another dimension. Are we together? Many believers desire to walk in power. Many believers desire to make progress with their lives. But many times we limit our spiritual progress by focusing only on the physical realm. Focusing only um, on science and logic and all of these things so when we are confronted with issues that require outsourcing intelligence beyond this realm we become stranded are we together now man was given an advantage of duality of realms that means I can be in this realm physically but then I can outsource intelligence from another dimension this is very powerful very very powerful that all that you see is not all that there is. Medically speaking, when an individual is diagnosed with a situation, please look up. We try using medical tools and if that man is limited as far as the limitation of medicine is concerned, we conclude that there is no solution for that man. But the Bible lets us know that the physical realm is not the only realm where we can draw strength. There is another dimension, my goodness, that you can outsource spiritual power from another realm and administer it physically and the results will show physically. Now watch this. If my body begins to swell, for instance, the question is, you are not surprised that my body is swelling because that is a supernatural occurrence too. I was not born that way. I was not surgically manipulated to begin to swell. But when the body goes down supernaturally, it now becomes a problem. You see the mind of men. Are we together now? Yes. If I suddenly begin to develop a growth that I was not born with, nobody begins to ask where does that growth derive its strength from because it's not growing at the rate of other cells in the body that means another kind of life is empowering it we can give it all kinds of medical explanations but the truth is that if it was being empowered by the same energy it will grow at the same rate with other cells the fact that the growth accelerated to destroy you it already tells you there is another kind of life empower it but if that growth should shrink or disappear now there is a problem where did it go to the question is where did it come from are we together the supernatural very very powerful until believers come to a point where they understand and appreciate the supernatural beyond being a Pentecostal phenomenon, beyond a phenomenon just for charismatics. We may never walk in certain levels of authority, power, 
and victory. For many people, they think the supernatural is just an option for those who are called into the apostolic and the prophetic ministry. So, if you feel you are not called into ministry, you just feel, let me remain at the level of principles and logic and human wisdom. The supernatural is not for men of God. The supernatural is not for charismatics and Pentecostals. The supernatural is not for preachers. The supernatural is a system of advantage provided for man so that we can walk experientially in victory. Jesus looks at Nathaniel and says, I saw you. That means this is not the only eyes I have. While you were under the tree, I saw you. In fact, he scanned him and said, An Israelite indeed in whom there is no guile. And Nathaniel said, This is surprising. You are here. And he said, Nathaniel, just because I gave you this tip of the iceberg, you are already surprised. You will even see yourself greater things than this. More than what you are seeing, you will see the heavens open and the angels ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. When you go to bed, isn't it amazing that while your body is lying down there, that same body is somewhere in the name of a mystery that you call a dream. You are there with your body, you are interacting with intelligence, participating, and you bring back information, and yet your body is lying down there. There are people who, for, you know, science right now has been exploring deeper and deeper into this this mysterious realm of the supernatural in fact i watched a documentary i think a few months ago where they tried to develop a machine that can record dreams yes and i think they've, they've made some advances in it so the the machine is connected to an individual whilst he's sleeping and it begins to give a pictorial representation of the dream that person is having The realm of the spirit when jesus walked upon the earth he demonstrated the reality and the supremacy of the realm of the spirit jesus for instance when the young lad brought five loaves and two fish he looked at them and he taught them a lesson that all you have in your hands is not all there is if you can tap into this realm many things can happen to what you already have listen this is very powerful because when you are aware of the fact that you are not limited just by this realm there is an advantage that you have the duality of realms are we blessed right from childhood i've been very intrigued about issues of the supernatural magic and all of these things even before i had an intentional encounter with the lord jesus christ it bothered me how people could manipulate laws and sometimes you would watch these people in shows bring out doves from their pockets is that true some of them and then now fortunately god planted me to come from africa Hello, Africa. We saw traditional festivals where people would put fire through their mouth and bring it out laughing, cut themselves with knife, with no injuries whatsoever. These people fraternize with spirits who introduce them to certain spiritual laws that expose them to the realm of the spirit. And on the strength of that view, they could command signs supposedly and wonders on earth the holy spirit is not the only spirit who can introduce men to the supernatural the holy spirit is not the only spirit who can introduce men to the realm of the supernatural in fact any spirit at all including demonic spirits can usher men into certain dimensions of the supernatural the Holy Spirit is the only spirit who can usher men into the supernatural in a way that edifies them and glorifies Jesus. The Holy Spirit is the only spirit who can usher men into the realm of the supernatural in a way and a manner that edifies the people 
and glorifies them. Every other spirit that exposes a man to the realm of the spirit will always leave a side effect in that man. Are we together now? But the Holy Spirit is not the only spirit that can expose men to the supernatural. For instance, when Moses came from his encounter with the God of the Hebrews, the Bible says he went to Pharaoh and said, Pharaoh, thus saith the Lord God of the Hebrews, let my people go. And he drew his rod. The Bible says the rod of Moses became a serpent. And you would think Pharaoh would look and say, wow, impressive. How did you make this happen? Pharaoh was not moved at all. He called Janus and Jembes, the magicians of Egypt, and said, cast your rod also. And they casted their rods. It became the exact same thing. By what spirit then did their rod become a serpent? Hallelujah. That is why I must balance this very quickly. That in your desperation to know more of God, in your desperation to open up yourself to the realm of the Spirit, you must be sure that the Word of God and the Spirit of God become your principal guides. Because they are not the only guides available. Your passion and your desperation can connect you to other guides and other spirits that are not of God. They will usher you to the realm of the spirit and you will bring back error, you will bring back destruction. They will aberrate your spiritual progress. Many people have gone to fast and pray, wanting power, wanting to be open to the prophetic. And from the sincerity of their desperation, because they did not honor the word of God and the spirit, Spirit of God as the principal tools for exposing a man to the realm of the spirit in a way that edifies that individual and brings glory to God. Many of them had all kinds of interactions with pseudo Jesuses, they had all kinds of interactions with spirits of the dead, they had all kinds of interactions with the inter intergalactic realm, and they brought back messages, strategies, formulas that are now destroying the body of Christ. Can I tell you, I searched, I think a few days ago, to find out how many religions in the, are in the world. Let me give you that for free. There are over 4,000 religions in the world. How many? And counting. 4,000 registered religions in the world and counting. Every one of those 4,000 religions came from an encounter. And I can tell you, if there was no one following them, they would not have the audacity to even register it. Every one of them has a proposition that is directed to the realm of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not the only guide and usher to give you spiritual experiences. You have to understand this. Because we are a people of prayer. And right now... Um, spiritual activities like prayer and fasting and so on and so forth are really being emphasized in the body of Christ now people are having a heightened awareness of the value of these spiritual experiences but we need to be careful because Satan also wants that kind of condition the moment your hunger and your desperation rises to its zenith and you are not conscious of the Holy Spirit and the Word of God eventually you will arrive the realm of the Spirit and you will be escorted by strange and familiar spirits into error that will make for doom and destruction a few years ago in Zaria I think I've shared this story somewhere I finished a meeting and then just to see a few people to counsel them and then I'm seeing these three or four gentlemen and one of them had this beautiful priestly regalia and I was wondering wow what a gentleman this guy really wants to be a Nazarene I thought it was just his passion to be like Jesus. Only for me to find out that that gentleman believed he was Jesus. Not like Jesus. Not in the image of Jesus. Jesus. They came from Kano. And the other gentleman who was with him was, I, I, I think, was it Judas now or John? One of these guys. No, 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 no. I'm not joking. I really mean what I'm saying. They really believed it. And... For some reason, they believe that like Jesus received that impartation from John, they left Cano and they came to me for that, that semblance of the baptism. 
I was watching with shock. Now, I've seen all kinds of things in ministry, believe me. I've seen all kinds of things, but this one was unique and strange and interesting. That a human being can actually come to that point. Do you know, when I researched, those guys started as a prayer group. They didn't start as people who were bad people. They were sincere gentlemen who felt like they wanted to press into spiritual things. Welcome to the realm of the spirit unassisted by the Holy Ghost. And you find out that another spirit will drive you into all kinds of things and will ship back doctrines of demons, will ship back all kinds of things that destroy people. People have written books out of false encounters. People have deceived. Now the body of Christ is practically confused. We do not even know. Many believers don't know whether they are saved or not again. Because of the many extra biblical encounters that have come. And it does not mean that the people who had these encounters were necessarily bad. They have not been taught the protocol of accessing the supernatural. There are all kinds of combinations of trado african religion together with spiritism and then you find scriptures in psalms to back it up and that becomes a terrible combination like a bad cook and you create something that destroys people there is a reason why i'm teaching you on the supernatural this morning number one because it is god's desire that we access these realms if we must walk in victory we cannot shy away from the reality of this realm. But number two, to provide for us a roadmap by the Spirit. So that we do not delve into all kinds of error and superstition that would destroy us and destroy our lives. Let me finish my story. I honestly cannot even remember how I finished with those gentlemen. Because I think that guy was determined to remain Jesus. I think I remember trying to propose and advise him and to let him know that our dominion in this kingdom is not absolute dominion. It is shared dominion. The life of God that we have was not derived from us. It came from Jesus to us by connection. And yet they would not believe. I know a gentleman many years ago again who really began praying and pressing into spiritual things until he eventually became, it was a mental condition. I think it resulted to something like bipolar. That gentleman was in the hospital for a very long time. In fact, he stayed in my house. I brought him then at that time to stay in my house for a day or two, hoping that the presence of God in that house will help rehabilitate whatever was happening to him. And I woke up in the night and I saw the gentleman carrying a handkerchief, looking for my mirrors. I said, you are leaving the next day. By the morning, you are out of my house. I've made my spiritual contribution. God knows I love you. Are we together? Many people have routed the realm of the spirit in unauthorized ways i hope you know that there are many ways to enter a house for instance you can tear the roof and come in you are in the house but you are in the house illegally you can jump through the fence you can squeeze through the window but the authorized way to enter the house is through the door Jesus and Jesus alone said I am that means I am the authorized access the way the door you can follow through any other route if you enter my house through my window you are in my house but you are not welcome are we together this is not to plant fear in you we are discussing the subject of encounters and we have to be careful the supernatural is a realm that is available for all. The supernatural is a realm that we should all get to. That means you should get to a point in your life where you can manifest the gifts of the Spirit. You should get to a point in your life where your eyes are open to encounter and have visionary experiences. All of these systems of advantage, as I call them, they are important for the excelling of the believer. But if you are not guided, 
the devil will deceive us and manipulate our sincere desire into realms and encounters and activities that will destroy us. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. So the supernatural is an interplay between the word of God and the spirit of God. Let me talk for a minute or two about the word of God. Please look up. When you are dealing with the subject of the supernatural, there is something about God you have to know and understand. That the boundary of God's commitment to the believer is his word. The word of God represents the jurisdiction of God's commitment to the believer. God cannot be committed to the believer outside of the provision that the word allows. You have to understand this. He has limited his interaction with man to the provisions that scripture allows. That means if you cannot find the basis for that interaction from scripture, God is not committed to it. Are we together now? This is, this is a rule of thumb that you have to understand in your desire to explore the realm of the spirit. That the boundary of God's commitment to man is his word. That means there is nothing God will ever do with man, do for man, do to man, that will be outside the provisions that his word allows. In fact, the Bible says that he has exalted his word above his reputation. So, there is no other way an individual will be saved in this kingdom. Because according to scripture, the formula for administering salvation is that with your heart you believe unto righteousness. Is that true? And that with your mouth confession is made unto salvation. So if anyone ever tells you he or she was saved, you have a right to ask them, how did you get saved? Verify the formula. If it's not consistent with scripture, no matter what kind of peace he has, he's not saved. Based on scripture. Our confidence must come or be derived from the provisions that the scripture allows. The Bible says in obtaining promises, if it is God's way, there are two things that must be added to your equation. Faith and patience. It says to follow them who through faith and patience. If you ever meet a man who obtained a promise in the kingdom and you do not find the application of faith and you do not find patience, he says run away. Even if there is a promise, he's holding. So there is faith and patience. Are we together now? When you understand the administration of the word of God, then it is going to be difficult for you to delve into error. I give you an instance. If God opens my eyes right now and say, I see a dear sister here and I see a spirit standing behind her or I see a grave. Now I'm interpreting how spiritual things happen. Now I'm seeing all these kinds of things because the way the realm of the spirit works is very different from the way this realm works. The concept of time and distance in the realm of the spirit is not exactly the way it works here. In one minute, I can see something that would take me ten minutes to interpret. Are we together now? Yes. The, the, the capacity to assimilate is higher in the realm of the spirit than this realm. We can be praying right now and I can say in Jesus' name. And I'll be sharing something that I just saw and it will take over five, ten minutes. The realm of the spirit is by far superior to this realm. When the hand wrote on the wall in the days of Daniel, it was only four words from the physical realm. Mene, Mene, Tekel, Ufesen. But Mene alone meant, O oh king, you have been weighed in a balance and you have been found wanting. <laughs> so imagine what happens when you pray in tongues. That 10 minutes of praying in tongues, you are not just saying ba 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 ba. Your mind thinks that's what you are saying. But in the realm of the spirit, you are stretching and you are creating realities and interacting with the realm of the spirit. Are we blessed now? I hope someone is learning something. So, back to my vision. 
I'm seeing this lady, for instance, and I'm seeing a grave, and I'm seeing destruction. Now, I can interpret everything based on what I saw. And I say, young lady, stand up. Then I will tell her that I just saw a grave. I just saw a spirit behind you. And I can leave that lady in that state and destroy her faith, dampen her confidence about God, and allow the devil to now take advantage of her imagination and manifest what I saw. Or I can interpret what I have seen from the lens of scripture. Now I have seen the grave. The grave has never been, except for the situation of Jesus, the grave has never really been a place of advantage. It's a representation of death and doom and destruction. Is that true? So when I see a grave and I see a spirit, I must be able to pass my vision through the lens of scripture to profit that lady. The interpretation must be constructed in a way and a manner that regardless what I saw, victory is what she must hear. Are you getting what I'm saying now? My seeing may be correct, but because I do not know that the word of God is more superior. Listen, the dominion of the word of God is not only in this physical realm. Even if you take the word of God to the realm of the spirit, every spirit will submit to it also. If God, the spirit, submits to the word of God, there is no other spirit that stands higher than the word of God. The word of God still commands authority and dominion, even in the realm of the spirit. Are we together? Yes. So if I see you dead in the realm of the spirit, I'm not just going to stand and say, I see you dead. There are many scriptures that will support my interpretation. Number one, I will discern your level of maturity. Are you matured enough for me to give you that vision without it affecting your confidence? If I discern you are immature, I will leave it and pray about it. I will just minister life to you and not have to tell you the vision. Because receiving that vision when you are not grounded, even if I pray for you, the, the level of, of the low level of transformation will still make you a victim of what I've said. Is God teaching someone something this morning? There have been many times when I'm about to take a trip and then I get text messages from people and many genuine, sincere people, some of them prophets, and they say, Apostle, you are about to take a trip. And I say, that's exactly true. Say, be careful. Please don't go. I'm seeing a ghastly motor accident. And they are not lying. That was what Satan planned that morning when I woke up. But I have to get there because... I'm aware that Satan does not have any special occasion to kill me. The Bible already gives me an information that any day and any time he finds a chance. He is an enemy. There is no rest as far as that agenda is concerned. So that news of, of tragedy based on my transformation is not news. I have always known he does not like me. There's nothing new about it. Now listen, I do not dishonor the vision that that man saw. But then my confidence is based on the fact that I have the principles of scripture that can veto that spiritual activity. And I go on my journey and return back safely. Just on hearing that vision, at least three scriptures come as weapons. One, I shall not die, but live and declare. You don't just make bold face for nothing. There has to be a scriptural basis. Number two, honor your father and your mother in the Lord. Go and ask my parents. Go and ask every spiritual leader in this nation whether I have dishonored them. So what becomes the basis? Where is the hedge broken that the serpent will strike? And then number three, I set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Choose life. That becomes the basis of my confidence. If all I say is, God forbid, I wouldn't die. You would die like you, are, you cannot imagine. It has to be the scripture. That the scripture has authority even in the realm of the spirit. I don't need to know what spirit was assigned. I just need to know that every spirit must submit to scripture. I pray you understand what I'm teaching this morning.
Let me teach you within the few minutes we have left how to correctly access the supernatural. We we'll have some time this evening to pray for the sick and to minister. So do well to invite as many people who are trusting the Lord who we'll have some time to minister. I think you should clap with your pastor too. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes. It will be, it will be a time of activations there are many of us who the lord sent you to this conference to come and to receive not just to be enlightened but to encounter graces graces that will lift you and open up new doors and new dimensions for you if you're with me say amen, amen. there are many of you that tonight age-long captivities that have refused to bow to the name and the lordship of the christ by the administration of his power through his word in the name of Jesus, we will ward off these arsenals of darkness against your life. There are four keys that can help you manifest the supernatural. By manifesting the supernatural, I don't just mean visionary experiences, but walking practically in the supernatural. You want your life to command signs and wonders. You want your life to be a manifestation of the possibilities of the kingdom beyond the physical realm. Here are the keys. Number one, the first thing you need is knowledge. You need knowledge of the principles of scripture. You need to know the word of God. Knowledge of the principles of scripture. That means, if you truly do not know the word, if you do not contend for enlightenment through the word, you may never be able to manifest the supernatural in a way that profits you, glorifies Jesus, and becomes a blessing to all who are connected to you. The word of God. The formula remains the same. In the beginning, God. John 1 verse 1 says, In the beginning was the word. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Verse 2 says, the same was in the beginning with God. Verse 3 says, all things, how many things? Does that include your finances, your lifting, your tomorrow, your exaltation, your restoration? All things were made by Him. And without Him, that means outside of the influence of the Word of God, was not anything made that was made. You must pay attention to scriptures. I commend you to God, He says, and to the Word of His grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. This is the Bible. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 16. It says that the word of Christ should dwell in you richly in all wisdom. In all wisdom. In all wisdom. In all wisdom. Not some wisdom. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. 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 You must allow the word of God to find expression within your spirit. You must become an addict of the word of God. If you truly want to walk in the supernatural... Before you start engaging in spiritual exercises, make sure you have the fortification of the word. Fasting for days, praying for days without a foundation of the word will only expose you to the realm of the spirit, but then it will expose you to familiar spirits. You must have that foundation of the word. We are born of the word. We live by the word. We reign by the word. Say amen. amen. You must have knowledge. I submit to you that there is a lot of spiritual ignorance in the body of Christ. Spiritual ignorance. I respectfully admit, and now I'm teaching apostolically, not just to house on the rock, but generally within the body of Christ, the truth is that there is a lot of Bible study. There is a lot of scripture recitation, but there is very little access to superior knowledge spiritual knowledge we reign in this kingdom on the strength of the high level illumination that we have 
you must contend for light. John 1, 5. And the light shineth in darkness. And the light shineth in darkness. And the darkness comprehended it not. You must become a student of scripture. Not for the purpose of preaching. Not for the purpose of having something to say. But for your personal spiritual growth. You are mature to the degree to which the word of Christ abides in you. John 15, the first eight, eight verses. When you read from verse 1 down to verse 8. It talks of the abiding power of the word. If you are abide in me and my word abides in you that you will ask whatever you will and it will be given to you you have to abide i believe the word of god i study the word of god i love the word of god it is my meditation all day long it has constructed my understanding are we together one advantage of the word of god is that it constructs your viewpoint you are able to interpret life from the lens of scripture make the word of god a priority in your life and you have set yourself on a course for supernatural living i guarantee you on this the bible contains the wisest perspective on all matters the bible scripture contains the wisest perspective on all matters now in truth i will tell you you will find a lot of theological debates as to um the fact that there may be other books of the bible and it's not only 66 books i agree i agree based on theology but the bible lets us know that this that has been canonized is sufficient to communicate the whole counsel of God. As far as the excelling of the believer is concerned. There is nothing that you will ever encounter in your life that does not have a solution based on scripture. So the information here is sufficient enough. It says many miracles Jesus did which are not recorded in this book. So it tells you there are others that are not recorded. It said, but this has been recorded that you will believe. And that in believing you will find life. The truths here are sufficient to administer life and victory as far as the course of your lifetime is concerned. Are we blessed? Knowledge. The knowledge of scripture. And let me tell you this. The seed for the harvest of knowledge is to be able to set yourself, to give yourself to study and to give yourself to learning. The Bible says study to show yourself approved. A workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Preachers, we must study. Believers, we must study. I am in a hurry would destroy our lives. I am in a hurry would destroy our lives. They are life to those who find them. They are more than information to those who find them. They are life. The Bible is not a lecture manual. It contains the character of God. It is the revelation of God's ways. It's modus operandi. When you understand scripture, you are enlightened. Dominion, the word exousia that is translated authority, it means delegated power that is based on light. The power to stand and represent another based on that information that that one had. That means if I send someone to stand for me, I would not just say delegate for me until I tell him what I know. Are we together now? That sharing together. So you come to a point of illumination. Number two, very quickly. The second key that activates the supernatural. Are we ready? Yes. The second key is faith. You must have faith in God. You must have the faith of God. Mark 11. We'll start reading from verse 22. Mark 11. This is Jesus about to teach us his classic on faith. Jesus said unto them, have faith in God. For many of you who are familiar with the writings of men like Papa Hagen, they would interpret this as have the faith of God. Next verse. He says, this is how the character of faith in God or the faith of God works. Whatsoever thou shalt say, so in faith there is a saying, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, 
So the heart is part of the equation for faith. And shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. The Bible says he shall have whatsoever he saith. The general rule is in verse 24. Verse 24. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray. So we see that prayer is part of the faith equation. Believe that thou receivest them, and thou shalt have them. You cannot manifest the supernatural if there is no faith. What is faith? Your conviction. Faith is beyond believing. The word believing comes from the Greek word pistis. It means conviction. But it does not stay with conviction. You can believe and yet you have not manifested faith. Faith is the name given to the action that you take based on your conviction on who God is and the integrity of his word. There has to be action for it to be called faith. And the action will be in accordance to the conditions he's created. You don't just act at random. Every promise in scripture has a a predefined condition attached to it. If you want to prosper in the kingdom, you want supernatural prosperity and the blessings of God, it is your responsibility to find out the principles that connect to that possibility. There is he that scattereth, the Bible says, and yet increaseth. There is he that withholdeth more than is meat and tends to poverty. The diligent hand shall be made fat. So these are all the tools that make for prosperity in the kingdom. There is a place for diligence. There is a place for favor. There is a place for the anointing. There is a place for sowing. And all of these things put together. When you know them and you act upon them, you put pressure on God's integrity. And then you begin to see a manifestation of the same. Most believers believe. But they do not have faith. If I ask you for instance to come up here. And you keep speaking. And say I am coming. In the name of Jesus I am coming. In fact I am running. I am in a hurry I am coming. You heard me. And you are communicating with me. But you have not come. So many people just continue to confess and there is a place for that it's from the word homologio it means repeat as you heard to confess means to to echo it again as stated by the word but it does not mean that you just confess over everything and sit down there are things that you need to stand up and move you need to act Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 1. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord, to do and observe all that I command you this day. It says that you shall be exalted above the nations of the earth, and this blessing shall come upon you and overtake you. You must be careful to do, not just to learn. Faith is not just saying what God has said. Faith is doing what God has said. The power is in the doing. Are we together now? When he commanded the ten lepers, go and show yourself to the priest, he said. The Bible says, as they went. Not as they wished. Not as they were deciding. It was as they went. Turning water to wine, John 2. He says, fetch and go and serve. The Bible says, as they were going, that risk was what turned the water to wine. Can I tell you the truth? If you will ever raise a dead body, you must have the faith to stand before one. If you cannot have the courage to stand before a dead body, forget about resurrection. And I can tell you firsthand in my life, I've stood in front of a few dead bodies. Usually when people die, people are quick to call me and you know, try to pray for their resurrection first before eventually they give up. So I get this quite honestly, maybe at least once every week. Someone has died, apostle, we believe something can happen. And I agree, I've used it to exercise my faith. Uh, I don't know if I've shared it here. The first time, it was the anatomy lab of ABU Zaria. You know, they have a mortuary there. Someone died and they took me there and closed the door. Yes, sir. I saw dead bodies and I was wondering, now, which one am I going to pray for? Faith. That's right. Faith. I laid my hands on that dead body and it was as if I was touching a stone. I'd been embalmed. In 
the name of Jesus, come back to life. In the name of Jesus, come back to life. I said everything, quoted everything, declared. Remem tried to remember how Jesus raised the, the son of the, the widow at name, Lazarus. All these people, nothing worked. Do you know, to be honest with you, at the point I stood there and I told them, I said, you people should open the door for me. The next time would be the mortuary of the teaching hospital. Now they locked me there because usually they don't allow that. So they smuggled me in and closed the door. So many dead bodies, some lying on that. And I was watching you. Ah! I was afraid until fear. Do you know, let me tell you. One of the ways that God takes away fear. Look up please. Let me teach you something. One of the ways that God takes away fear is to bring you face to face with what you are afraid of. You will stay with it so long you will stop being afraid of it. I prayed and prayed and nothing happened and I just used the opportunity to think about my life. At least let me not waste that moment before they open the door. Everyone here was once alive. Oh God. Teach me to number my days that I may apply my heart unto wisdom. How did I get here? I'm teaching about faith. <laughs> Hallelujah. You must manifest faith. Now, for a long time, I have a few more minutes. For a long time, there has been a debate, especially between the charismatics and you know, certain believers that we may call, respectfully speaking, maybe word of faith. It's been that there are people who choose, listen carefully, there are people who choose faith and there are people who choose the Holy Ghost. Are we together? The Pentecostals and the Charismatics, generally. So, the word of faith people, for instance, now this is not, we're all word of faith, you understand what I'm saying? There are people who just believe that all it takes is just your faith. Leave the Holy Ghost. Once you have faith, let He can go places. And there are those who believe, forget about faith. Faith is nonsense. Once you have the Holy Ghost, just move. The Bible has never dichotomized faith and the Holy Ghost. Let me explain to you the ministry of faith and the Holy Ghost. Please look up. I'm holding here a bottle of water. The bottle is faith. The Holy Ghost is akin to the water. Are we together now? The power of the Holy Ghost has to flow through that funnel called your faith. So the assignment, listen to me, faith has no power in itself. Faith is just a system of connection. You must believe faith but not idolize it. There is, there is no dogma out of faith. Faith is simply a system of connection. Faith connects you, your situation, to the power of God. But the agency that really brings the result is not faith. It is the power of God. It is His divine power that gives us all things. But when we say it happened through your faith, you are right because it was your faith that connected you. Are we together now? Yes. Can I, can I use one example with money? Will you be sad if I bring out money? Praise God. Because there are people who are not in the mood for this kind of joke. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. Now, watch this. This is a hundred dollar bill. Are we together? If I want a bottle of water, watch this. And this is a hundred dollars. This hundred dollar bill connects me to the possibility of taking this water. Is that true? So, if you ask me, how are you going to get this water? I will lift this and tell you this is the assurance I have that I can get the water. But what do I really need? Which of them do I need? Which one brings the satisfaction? Which one brings the nourishment? It is not the money. But without this, I cannot access this. That is the union between the faith and the power of God. Faith and the power of God. Don't dichotomize it. No. It takes faith to access the power of God. It takes the power of God to provide solutions. Faith does not provide solutions. Faith is like currency. Currency can feed you. You are right. But currency is not food. Are you getting this example now? Yes. 
So, if I ask you, how do you think you'll be able to buy or pay for that house? You lift this. If I ask you, how did you purchase the house? You say, by God's grace, I had a hundred thousand or fifty million or whatever to buy the house. But it is, you are not going to live in the money, you will live in the house. This is how faith works. The assignment of faith comes to an end the moment the power of God is released. Are we together now? You have to learn this. This is what I want. The miracles, the breakthroughs, the increase, whatever it is. But this is what will bring it. Faith. So, I do not ignore this and start glorifying this while I'm dying of thirst. This comes so that I can use it to purchase this possibility. So when God wants me to have more of this, He gives me more of this. Are you seeing now? There is, there is, no, there is no fighting. When God wants me to always have this, He will make sure I always have this. But this is not really what satisfies me. This connects me to what provides solution for me. If you understand this, there will be no... There will be no confusion as to the ministry of faith and the ministry of the power of God. So when I say you need faith, it is true. Like you need currency. You don't go around the market or a mall strolling around and just desiring everything you want without the requisite level of finances to purchase that reality. Is that true? So when you build your faith, what are you doing? You are elongating and extending and strengthening your capacity to draw the power of God. It is true. So when he says, where is your faith? In other words, my power is available. But that container, that funnel to receive it. Remember that oil plus a small vessel does not equal profit. Profit is equal to oil plus a very large vessel, large vessels. The problem was not lack of oil. It was that the capacity to carry the kind of oil that would bring that woman out of death was not there. So if I am building my faith, it's like creating more vessels. I'm not going to invent another oil. The oil can grow to match the size of that, that container. That's how faith works. So when you commit to building your faith, listen carefully, you are opening up yourself to more of the power of God, more of the activity of the supernatural. Are we together? I've even gone ahead of myself. Number three and the last key is the anointing. Second Peter chapter 1 from verse 3. In fact, let me give you one more before that. The power of words. Just back up a bit. The power of words. I omitted one point here. The power of words. You cannot truly access the supernatural in silence. The realm of the spirit is voice activated. You manifest the realm of the spirit through words. Words in prayer. Words in word based declarations. The realm of the spirit is activated through words. Everybody say words. The Bible says where the word of a king is, there is power. You want to walk in the supernatural? Words. That you now declare over people, for instance, be healed in the name of Jesus. And at the point where you are speaking, the power of God to bring that healing is now released. Are we together now? Every time Jesus needed to perform a miracle, almost every time, there was a place in the equation of that miracle where words came forth. Lazarus, he said, come forth. And he that was dead came forth. Words. That means if you want to walk in the realm of the spirit, there is no place for silence. You must learn to declare. Not declare your problems, not declare your pain, declare scripture and command the realm of the spirit by the authority given to you in and through Christ to respond to you accordingly. And I will not be silent.
silent I will always worship you as long as I am breathing I Please look up. The Bible lets us know that we live off two things. One, bread. Two, words. Jesus himself was teaching. And he says the only way man lives is by bread and words. Bread and words. If you have bread alone, you will not live effectively. If you have words alone, you will not live effectively. You want to live effectively in this kingdom, you need bread for the physical realm, words for the spirit realm. Bread and words. So as I eat, I speak. No wonder you is the same mouth that you need to access both of them. Both bread and words require the same channel to remind you that you need both to survive. Bread and words. So when I begin to declare over my life, the Lord is my light and my salvation. I begin to declare over my destiny. In the name of Jesus, my going out is blessed and my coming in is blessed. I decree and declare the Gentiles come to my light and kings to the brightness of my rising. Nothing dies in my hands. I'm speaking with this understanding that words are powerful. They can create. They can adjust. They can manipulate things to be consistent with the will of the Father. Jesus is never called the prayer of God. Jesus is never called the fasting of God. But he is called the word of God. Are we together? When you pray, what makes prayer powerful is that it is a manifestation of words. Whether praying in the spirit... Or making prophetic decrees petitions in the spirit listen to me if you ignore the prayer ministry you have ignored the opportunity to take advantage of words and create possibilities with them prayer is powerful you want to access the realm of the spirit you must obtain grace from God to pray and please hear me in this conference if there is anything attacking your prayer life you must obtain grace this morning to fight it with a bulldog determination do not forbear with spiritual laxity it will destroy you and give Satan access to rob you of an opportunity to live a supernatural life say amen please I believe in prayer I truly believe in the ministry of prayer but I believe in prayer with understanding, not shadow boxing. I believe in prayer. The Bible calls certain kinds of prayers vain babblings. Jesus was giving warnings about prayer. And he says, when you pray, there is a protocol that you must follow. But hear me, he spake a parable to the end that men ought to pray. If you are an angel, that's all right. If you are a spirit alone, that's all right. But if you are a man, there is no record of God praying. He does not need to pray. But when God became a man, he prayed. And now that he's seated as a man, he's still praying. Even in heaven, Jesus is still praying. So all men must pray. You don't pray because you are on earth. You pray because you are a man. Because even in heaven, whoever is a man in heaven there must pray. Jesus the man seated at the right hand of the father still makes intercession for the saints are we together you must obtain grace to pray pray in the morning pray in the afternoon pray in the night pray when things are all right pray when things are not all right pray when you have breakthroughs pray when there are challenges james 5 13 is any of you afflicted let him pray the biblical recommendation for afflictions of all sorts is to pray are we together let him pray pray in the spirit pray with understanding 
Ladies and gentlemen, there is no other way. If we ignore the ministry of prayer, prayer in the spirit, prayer engaging scripture in strategic warfare prayers. There are gates and there are thrones, there are dominions mandated by darkness to stand and rob you from accessing your glorious destiny. Nothing will change by default. Time does not change things. Time only reveals. It does not change. You must engage the realm of the spirit in prayer. Unto thee that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Someone in one minute can you pray? Pray and declare in the spirit and in understanding. I decree and declare that I begin to walk in the supernatural. You are declaring by the spirit of God. Everything around my life is supernatural. Supernatural finances. Supernatural ministry. Supernatural grace. Supernatural family. Supernatural advancement. In the name of Jesus. I grow past the natural course of things. Supernatural living. Hallelujah. Let me give us the last key. A quick recap. Number one, the first key to accessing the supernatural and manifesting the same is knowledge of scripture, the word of God. Number two, faith. Faith in God. Number three, the power of words. Words that come in prayer, listen carefully. God bless you. You can help me drop it in the offering envelope. Thank you. Words that come in prayer and word based prophetic declarations. Lamentation is not prayer, lamentation is just a human way to express pain. Ah, this is how my life is. You are not praying. No. Can I tell you this? God is touched with the feelings of our infirmity, but He only moves in response to His Word. God does not move in response to our feelings. God is touched with our feelings, but because He also submits to His Word, He will only respond at the instance of His Word. The last is the anointing. Mm. The anointing was given to us by God to help us manifest the supernatural. The power of God. 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 3. The Bible says, according as his divine power hath given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us unto glory and virtue. Your breakthrough will be according as His divine power gives. Your lifting is according as His divine power gives. Listen to me. The divine power of God at work in a human vessel is what transforms you to a sign and a wonder. You are able to walk and manifest the supernatural when the anointing of the Holy Spirit rests upon your life. And believe me, I know what I am saying. Most people have downplayed the power of God because we have limited the operation of the power of God to just falling down and getting up. So, the moment you are able to have someone fall down and stand up, many times we convince ourselves that that is the limit to the operation of the power of God. The assignment of the power of God is to insist that everything in your life becomes consistent with the word of God. The assignment, listen to me, the power of God has the assignment to make the word of God look true in your life. That means if there is nothing to confirm, the anointing has no ministry. Please understand this. The power of God has no ministry until the word of God goes forth. The assignment of the power of God is to stop the word of God from looking like a lie in your life. So when God says, I am lifting you. He sends his power. The assignment of that power is to make sure by any means you do not remain at that position. Are we together now? Yes. So, if the president of a nation gives a decree and says there has to be sanitation or there is a lockdown for a day, the president does not go around ensuring that houses are locked and shops are locked. 
there is an agency mandated for that, but they go at the word of the president. The basis of their operation, the basis of their arrest, the basis for their release is the word of the president. So if he has not spoken, they cannot just come and hold you. So when you decree as the king that you are, in the name of Jesus, then the power of God is released to begin to produce the miracles and the signs and the wonders. If he says, I am blessed, the assignment of the word of God or the power of God is to insist that anything that looks like a curse, anything that defies the operation of the blessing, that it be judged by that power. Are we together now? This is, very, this is a, a powerful revelation. If God says, I am the head and not the tail, then there is a dimension of his power that is released over that statement. The power continues to trail and guide me. If anything appears in my life that can make me the tail, that becomes the assignment of the power of God. It stays there to deal with that situation until it brings me back as the head. If God declares upon your life that favor follows you, that anointing for favor will rest upon you like a mantle. And anybody who can bless you, that anointing will force them to not ignore you. The anointing has the assignment of insisting that they pay attention to you and attend to you until you match the level of the speaking of that favor. The four lepers, when a prophetic word came by this time tomorrow over Samaria, there were four lepers who were walking, but the power of God came to amplify their steps. And the enemies heard and they began to think that they had hired a few people to come and fight them and they ran away and left plenty there. That's the assignment of the power of God. And I know that someone who came for this conference, especially this morning, you are at a point in your life where there are many words over you, but it looks like there is no performance. You need to engage the power that makes that word come to pass. Otherwise, you will keep piling prophecies that will make God look like a liar. God is not a man that you should lie. Why is he not a man that you should lie? Listen to me. Uh, you, you may have heard it in my teachings. God became a man, but he is not a man. If God is a man, then he must worship who created him. He became a man. But he is not a man. Men lie. They don't lie because they are evil. They lie because they are men. But God is not a man that he should lie. Not the son of man that he should repent. That means before God speaks, he will vet whether he has the power to back up what he is saying. Everything that he said here, he has vetted himself and found out that he has sufficient power to bring it to pass. So when God says, Joshua Selman, you will be lifted above the nations of the earth and these blessings will come upon you and overtake you. I believe him because the word is true, but I also believe him because there is a force behind that word that will insist that I do not remain small. On the strength of this, you can rise. This is why we have the audacity to come for a meeting like this and dare to say that your life will not be the same. This is why we can come for a meeting like this and dare to say that that situation that has scared you for a long time, that it can go. Imagine if it were just mere words. It would be dangerous to just give people mere words and information. Behind the things that we say, there is a throne, there is grace, and there is power that backs it. Blessed is she that believes, he says, for unto her there shall be a performance. Listen to me. If I take this water, I don't need to run to the lab and verify whether it is working correctly, whether it went to the right places. I trust the design and the wisdom and the intelligence of God. There is power that works there. Once it passes through my throat, I go and find rest. I do other things as proof that I know that God is intelligent enough. He's put this system. Imagine how long men live and yet they've never had to tear themselves open to verify whether digestion is happening correctly or not. 
And can I tell you this? He took responsibility for your trust in him. That's why he gave medicine and doctors. So that in case there is any malfunction, you have a right to outsource another drug and you can take it. And by taking it, it corrects everything. And if it defies that drug, should he not be responsible enough to say, now that this is over, I created this to function this way. If drugs are limited, then I can outsource from another realm beyond trees beyond water beyond injection i can bring another reality to keep you in place we are going to pray very briefly this morning i want you as you prepare to stand to believe that things will definitely begin to change in your life because of the reality and the presence of the supernatural the supernatural is an advantage that God gave the believer that we can command signs we can command wonders we can make tremendous levels of advancement in our lives if we move beyond the realm of science beyond the realm of intellect can I tell you there is a disclaimer though if you intend to walk in the supernatural then you must be ready to believe the things that science may not allow you may be ready to believe certain things that do not make sense are we together now it is not scientifically correct to dance and get breakthrough why will you dance your way to victory it doesn't make sense scientifically you work hard to get breakthrough but there is a mystery when you access the supernatural you must be childlike enough to subscribe to the formula that makes you to receive supernatural results. Please rise up on your feet. From a human standpoint, you don't give to increase. No. You keep to increase. But in this kingdom, it says you give and then you increase. Medically speaking, you don't lay hands on a man and the man gets healed. You submit the man to a therapy, you administer drugs, but the Bible says they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. In one minute, I'd like you to pray and ask the Lord to grant you grace that you desire to begin to walk and live in the supernatural. Please lift your voice and pray. You are a man of God here, pray. End time ministry requires the supernatural. You will never truly, truly, truly be able to command the kind of kingdom influence that you desire. Obtaining natural results. You are a businessman. It cannot be at the frequency of the natural. Lift your voice and pray. Please pray. Please pray. Just a few minutes this morning and we are done. Pray for the grace to build your faith. The grace to build your faith. The grace to build your faith. Your capacity to believe God. Your capacity to walk in keeping with spiritual principles. Declare over yourself the grace to pray. The grace to pray. The grace to pray. The grace to pray. Grace to pray. No spiritual laxity. The fire and the grace to pray. Hallelujah. Please look up. The final prayer that I want you to pray is for the kind and the level of power that must come upon your life to turn you to another man. He says, I have found David my servant and with my holy oil have I anointed him. It takes the power of the Holy Spirit to transform you from a natural individual 
to a supernatural individual the results that you need to command have to be spiritual to bring glory to the name of the lord you are going to pray power from heaven may fresh fire and fresh power come upon your life come upon your business go ahead and pray please pray let it be from the depth of your heart fresh power from heaven the bible says as he came out of the water which represents the word the heavens were opened and the holy ghost descended upon him in the similitude of a dove he was then driven to the wilderness fasted 40 days and 40 nights and the bible says and he returned in the power of the spirit spiritual empowerment is a necessity if we must walk in the supernatural say unto god how terrible art thou in thy ways through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves to you ministry with power business with power career with power family life with power excelling in destiny with power someone is praying no more ordinary living no more ordinary business supernatural by the spirit the power of god has come to my life to give me an advantage hallelujah hallelujah please listen before i step down i want to encourage you as much as possible please i want you tonight to invite everyone you love and everyone you know for the service tonight because i believe with all my heart that one of the things that the lord is going to be doing is that he will be granting us encounter with power genuine power that produces results results that can be proven listen if your life does not bear fruit and it does not command results you will be frustrated for a while you may ignore it as though it does not matter but eventually the frustration will eat you up and it will not give you room to be fulfilled it says listen to me herein is our father glorified when ye bear much fruit so shall you be my disciples hallelujah praise the name of the lord let me just speak over your life this morning and then we wrap up thank you for your patience and i pray that these truths you have heard will not just be a preacher's information but that it comes to your heart and that it dwells in your heart and that it will produce results in your life i stretch my hands right now in the name of jesus christ there's there's no time for ministration now but i, I just saw the hand of god just rest on a lady right now just saw like the power of god just resting on one lady right now please help her my dear i don't know if you're a member of this church or not but the lord said i should tell you that that is an an end he's brought an end to captivity over your life and your family just help her she doesn't have to come out in the name of jesus christ an end to captivity by the spirit of the living god father i thank you for the privilege of ministering your word to your people the kind of power and anointing that you need for the days that are ahead i decree and declare right now may that engracing from heaven rest upon you for someone you are a man of god you came for this conference with hunger crying from the depth of your heart for a new anointing crying from the depth of your heart for a new release in the name of jesus may that grace rest upon you for someone you came here because the challenges that stand before you the level of grace you have accessed may not be able to give you triumph above it in the name of jesus let there be an upgrade of power 
from today ordinary living comes to an end in your life ordinary business comes to an end in your life ordinary ministry comes to an end in your life you begin to walk in the supernatural you begin to manifest the supernatural and in the name of jesus i declare that the spirit of error the spirit of deviation and apostasy deviation from the patterns of god remains far from you you will access the realm of the spirit correctly and you will manifest the same in a way that edifies you and glorifies dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny the phase of development lord grant me the discipline